Hey, this is Joe Stedman. I'm going to talk today uh, about the Hunters. This is a new game that was put out by CP Press, which is ComSim World. They, they, they're venturing into making their uh, traditional board games, which is cool, by Gregory Smith. Um, so I'll talk about it for a bit, I'll show you the game, and I'll give you some thoughts. So, the Hunters is a solitaire game, meaning that obviously you play by yourself. If you've ever listened to my reviews in the past, a game I really like is the game B-17 Queen of the Skies, which is a World War II simulation or a World War II solitaire game based on a B-17. And you take the role of a B-17 crew, you go through the, the war, you try to successfully complete your missions, you keep track of those missions, um, enemy fighters and dropping bombs and damage to your plane, percentages of hit targets, things like that, you all track that on a notepad or a, a game sheet and it determines your success rate. And this, you know, it's it's kind of like from the era before the video games and it's got a certain elegance to it. It's one of my favorite solitaire games. Well, this game, The Hunters, is that same game but based on a German submarine. So let me show you how the game works quickly and tell you a bit more about what I think. So you can see the game comes with an assortment of different things here. You have um, some dice it comes with, the instructions, different charts. You'll have a, a, the pad here. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. So you have your uh, hunter's patrol log. You have your different U-boats that uh, are covered by these different uh, data sheets here. You got your counter sheet and uh, I'll show you that too, close up of that. Let me just zoom in on the counter sheet. Pretty good counters. Uh, different, you know, similar to keeping track of different things that are going on during a game. Different ships, then you have ones for the different uh, airplanes that could possibly attack you, different situations, crew getting in, your torpedoes, then your different submarines that you could play. Alright, then you have the almighty charts, and there's a couple different charts that you're going to be flipping through through the course of the game to see what happens. So here you have the rules. Um, Typical war game rules, but these are real good quality. Full color, examples of play laid out war game style with the different uh, specific paragraph numbers. The back has examples of play and then a uh, uh, samples and then some historical stuff, kind of neat to read about uh, historical um, U-boat commanders. So you have all these different charts and they're labeled. Random events chart, things that could possibly happen during the course of the game. Torpedo breaks loose. Uh, Luftwaffe Recon, things like that. Then you have some optional stuff, some charts that you can use. These are names of ships that you could sink if you want to see which specific ship. And a kind of a somber note is these are real ships that were actually sank by U-boats, which is kind of interesting. U-boat um, damage and repair chart. Gun, uh, firing your torpedoes, detection, all the different things that could happen in the game. Encounters, you're going to see, you're going to roll your die during the course of your, and I'll, I'll show you the ship card here, but you're going to go through and this is possibly going to happen. Then you're going to roll to see what ships are there. Depends on what month it is. Uh, aircraft that you could reach. What you could do with those aircraft. And then here's the combat mat. Okay, so this is we're going to track the actual combat. It's going to show you put your little target ships up here. You're going to, what happens, here's your sequence of play that you're going to use during the actual combat. And it's not very complicated. You're basically going to look things up. You're going to roll your dice, just like B-17. But this, here's the actual ship chart. So you're going to track your ship and the different patrols. The, your crew, your engines, your torpedoes are going to go up here, um, where you have your torpedoes, different things here. And here's your different patrols. And your ship, your little submarine, is going to go along this. And after you finish this, you get to go back to the submarine base and you roll to see how long you're there, possibly refit, you could get a new, you could upgrade your sub. Now at the top here will say, like, this sub's available September of 1939. Here is the patrol log, all right? So it's going to show you the different things you're going to keep track of, your different patrols, the name of your, uh, the name of your boat. You can do, you can, there's a chart showing you how to pick a, a U-boat number, the commander of your boat, tonnage, you know, you can kind of track all that. And it shows you how to do that in the rules. So overall, the way the game works is you're going to pick a U-boat that you want to play and what month of the year you want to start. If you start with the older U-boats, you can start earlier in the game. You go on your missions, you roll dice to see what happens on your missions as far as encounters. 
you try to sink the ships, you could possibly get sunk yourself, you try to evade, There's all you have all kinds of options and you're referencing these charts and you're rolling on those charts to see how you do and you kind of, you see what happens and you record the ships that you sink and you try to make it as long as you can. When you die or you get to June of 1943, which was when the game ends, you compute how much tonnage you sank or you'll look and see that there's a chart and it'll show you how you did. It's actually a lot more fun than you might think. If you've ever played a solitaire game, you would understand how fun this can be. But if you've not played a solitaire game before, it's just it's different than a computer game because you have all these things you can touch, and you have um, it kind of builds a story as your as your submarine goes on and on and on, and you try to survive, and you have near misses where you're almost sunk and things, and you get attached to your submarine. And I don't know if it's because it's physically here, and you're working with the counters, and you're you're looking up stuff why it's different than playing a computer game, but it just feels different. I, I like the way it feels. I have I have computer games on, uh, I, what's, what, I have that, com, that submarine computer game, the Ubisoft one, I can don't even know, I hardly ever play it. It's just, it's not as fun. So I like this, I'll be playing it for sure. My B-17 game, I, I still play that quite often. I have the Little Stinker is the name of my, my B-17s who made it through all 25 missions, barely, but the only two people of the original crew survived. But I'm sure that I'll have a U-boat, and you get, like I said, you get connected to these U-boats, and then when one is sunk, you get you get upset, and it's all about that personal integrity thing when you're playing a, a, a random game or you're playing a solitaire game. You roll the die, and you look at the chart, and you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this happened. Should I roll the dice again? Ah, oh, that'd be cheating. So it's, it's fun to kind of test your integrity and see how long you can make it. So I recommend this game if you're looking for a solitaire game, if you like U-boats or you're looking for a solitaire game, something to play that's built to be played solitaire. I play a lot of my war games solitaire, even though they're designed to be played with two people or more, because, you know, finding opponents. So this, you don't need to find an opponent. The book is the, the opponent. So it's a lot of fun. And you can play this two-player. There's a system set up where you can you roll for each other, two submarines, it's, but it's a solitaire game. So look it up. I think you'll enjoy it.